All right, hello. Today, I am working on replacing the drag link on this 49 GMC with a new modern, uh, modern style drag link. So here we got the modern one up top. I've already replaced it on the pitman arm. Um, pitman arm is good to go. And what I had to do for that, the reason I'm replacing it is the ball studs that ride inside the drag link are worn out. They're, they're um, out of round by quite a bit. Um, you know, it's typical, they're old. Um, I measured them, they were about uh, like 20, 30 thousandths out of round, quite a, quite a bit. Even though I have new, I rebuilt the drag link, I've got new cups and springs, I got a drag, drag link rebuild kit, and that helped a bit. But because these are out of round, you know, you get high spots. So you might tighten it up, get it nice and perfect, and then you go to steer, you hit a tight spot, a high spot, and it'll tighten up and make the steering feel kind of lumpy or, or rough. So the solution to that is to replace the ball studs. And uh, I figured if I'm going to be going through the trouble of taking these things out, I might as well upgrade to a new drag link. Um, the 53-ish uh, the and later trucks use this. It's the same length. I was reading an article on the Stove Vault website about it. Uh, you can get these on Rock Auto and uh, other uh, parts houses. But Rock Auto, Rock Auto was a good, uh, probably the best price. It's an AC Delco, it was like 55 bucks. Um, so next step is here's the, uh, the steering knuckle. Right, this attaches to the uh, front wheel. The drag link goes here, and as you steer, it pulls the wheel back and forth. And uh, the tie rod goes in here that connects to the other side, to the other wheel. But we need to get this out. And it's the same process for that one. What I had to do was I had to grind off the back and then drill into it a little bit. And the reason is, so let's see. These things are pressed in there, right? And then they're peened over. So you can see where the stud is kind of like, like smashed down over the top of this uh, to keep it from ever backing out. Uh, so you gotta grind all that off so it's flat. And then in addition to that, when I tried to press this one out, it wouldn't budge. So I drilled into it. And once I, I used a step drill and I just went in maybe half an inch. And then once it was in, you can kind of see, I was able to press it out, and you can see how the, the end of it kind of flares out, right? And as I pressed it, having the hole allowed the sides to kind of collapse in. So it's almost like it tapers out um, to really lock it in there, and when they, when they peen it over, it just really locks it into place. So don't even try to press that out without grinding it off and then maybe putting a little bit of a starter hole in there. So I'm gonna do that now, and then we'll be back with the results. All right, I'm back from the bench grinder. I ground off the, the peened over part, and if you look, you can see the ridge where that stud um, shaft is actually, uh, you can see it, you see that little line? So when you, once you see that, you know you've ground off all the, the peened over metal. So next step, it's got a handy little starter hole for me. I'm going to take a step drill in the drill press and just kind of do this. I think I might have went a little overkill on the first one, so I'm going to go not so deep and then give it a try pressing it out. Be back with the results. All right, so I drilled my hole, started with a step drill, and then moved up to a, a bigger uh, regular drill because we don't need to keep going so deep with the step drill so I'm gonna give that a try in the press now all right I finally got it pushed out in the press um, so I did need to go open it up quite a bit more I was having a heck of a time getting it through and part of the problem is uh, because of the way this thing is shaped you can't get it to sit flush on the press so I had to come up with something creative. I found I had a, a bearing race um, that I used as a shim to help lift it up and keep it uh, 
keep it even because as you can see, you know, that, that curve in the arm was getting in the way of the press plates and I couldn't get a, a clean clamp and they'd keep sliding out on me. So finally it popped and made a pretty good snap when it went through, but it's, it was a little harder than the Pittman arm, but I did destroy a, a little socket you know, because the step drill makes kind of like a cup in there and it jammed itself in there. That's all right. Now I can press this out the rest of the way. Okay, it's out, finally. Press it out, no, no problem. Um, always be careful when you're using a press. Make sure you don't, you're not bottoming out on something and just putting tremendous pressure. Um, always be careful. If it's not moving, double check. Make sure you're not you know, pressing the moving piece into the press itself. Uh, last thing you want is to have 12 tons of pressure go and fling apart at you. Uh, just a reminder, as I was pressing down on this thing, I was double, triple checking. Don't want parts flying everywhere. Um, so, a little less work than I thought. I don't need to ream this. If you see, this is the one that I just pressed out. This is the one from the Pittman arm here. The shafts are a little smaller, even though the ball the balls are the same size. Um, I don't need to ream this; it fits right in. It's a little, a little big, so I might have to sleeve it or something. I don't know, but yeah, no need to ream it. These are the same size. Um, the the shaft here is the same size but the holes are definitely different. I did have to widen the one on the Pittman arm quite a bit to get it to fit. This one won't need it. So more to come when I finish.